In this video, I'm going to describe the physical geography of Sub-Saharan Africa by focusing in on how the land came to be, why it looks the way it does. And so we're going to focus in on some key landform features that we see in this particular region. In this particular video, I use a lot of various images that I get from the Paleo Map Project from Christopher R. Scatis. So I just want to give props to the origin of a lot of these images. And we can begin 250 million years ago when all the world's continents, all the world's regions were essentially combined to form one supercontinent, Pangaea. And so what we got going on here is we can just imagine what we're looking at is the globe 250 million years ago. The line right through the middle going up and down is the prime meridian. The line right through the middle going or west to east or left to right, uh, just below the yellow star is the equator. What is the yellow star? That's Indiana. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, over the course of time, the course of these images, look at the movement not only of Indiana, but we're going to, of course, focus in on Sub-Saharan Africa. Years ago, we now have the start of the breakup of Pangaea. And so here we have these two supercontinents that essentially came to be as Pangaea broke up, Laurasia to the north and Gondwana to the south. And so now we can see the general shape, that yellow dotted line is a general shape of what we see as far as what is today Africa. And so once again, we can go back to previous discussions regarding how Africa fits very nicely with South America. Well, they all were one one conglomerate called Gondwana, the super con uh, supercontinent, uh, kind of this outcome of Pangaea. Over the course of millions and millions of years, of course, plate tectonics and continents, they move. And so one of the things I want to emphasize here, but also in a couple other images, is the fact that these continents of the world, world regions, have broke off of Africa, and in particular, the southern hemisphere broke off of Gondwana, that one uh, supercontinent uh, that uh, broke off there from Pangaea. And as the plates continue on, we can now start to see the separation of the Atlantic Ocean. So we can see how then uh, Africa separated from Indiana, but also from Northern America. And so as you pay attention to these next few images, watch where North America scoots off to. Watch where South America scoots off to. Watch where, uh, you know, down here with Australia and India, how they separate off of uh, Africa. Now we're up to 100 million years ago, so relatively recently. Uh, so some things to note. First off, you can see the Sahara Desert. It's actually underwater. Uh, much of, uh, of northern and east Africa is underwater. It's essentially a big shallow sea. And so that's going to be very important when we try to understand the Sahara. Uh, why does it have a lot of salt in the sand? Well, it gets a lot of that salt uh, from its origins uh, from way back when it was underwater. Uh, also, what we have here is, as you can see, Madagascar and what will become India over just on the southeast of the African subcontinent. And so what we have there is the breakup of Madagascar as it separates from Africa, kind of breaks off and still remains that island. But then, you know, as we go forward, take a look at South Asia and Indian subcontinent come plowing into Asia. We'll kind of come back to that more when we get to South Asia, of course. That once again speaks to the movement of plates over time and how they've broken off from Africa, from Pangaea, from Gondwana, in the case of the Southern Hemisphere. And now to today. So hopefully this is very quick as far as going through the tectonic history of the subcontinent of Africa.